welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1983. Today, we're going to talk about Track and Field. The story of Track and Field takes us back to Konami. We have talked about Konami before. Konami was responsible for Scramble and Super Cobra. Konami has primarily worked as a Japanese publisher since we last talked in detail about the company. Track and Field is a sports arcade game. It takes place during the Summer Olympics, specifically during the Track and Field events. For those unfamiliar, the Summer Olympics are a once-every-four-year event in which most countries around the world send some of their best athletes to compete in a wide variety of sports. The Track and Field events are a group of events taking place on a large field surrounded by a track, hence the name. In the 1984 Summer Olympics, there were 24 different events for men and 17 different events for women. Those events include races at different distances, sometimes with hurdles for the racers to jump over, jumping competitions, throwing competitions, as well as overall athletic contests in which men compete in 10 different disciplines, known as the decathlon, and women compete in 7 different disciplines, known as the heptathlon. Konami's Track and Field has the player play six different events from the Track and Field events of the Olympics. The first event is the 100 meter dash. This is a race in which the player alternates between hitting two different buttons as quickly as possible in order to make their character run as quickly as possible in order to win the race. The second event is the long jump. In this event, the player must build up speed by quickly pressing the two run buttons, then timing their jump by pressing the action button at the right point, then holding the button until the right angle is selected. The longer the jump, the better. 42 degrees is considered the best angle for this event. The third event is the javelin throw. In this event, the player must have their character run using the same technique, then hold the action button at the right point to get the right angle. This will have the player throw the javelin, a long, thin, sharp spear. The longer the throw, the better. 43 degrees is considered the best angle for this event. The fourth event is the 110 meter hurdles. In this race, the player must use the run buttons as quickly as possible, then use the action button to jump over the hurdles that are placed along the track. The fifth event is the hammer throw. In this event, the player can start their character spinning with the press of one of the run buttons. Then the player must time the press of the action button to choose the angle of the throw of the hammer. The hammer is a metal ball at the end of a chain. The longer the hammer throw, the better. 45 degrees is considered the best angle for this event. The final event in the video game is the high jump. For this jump, the computer sets the run speed for the character. The player must then hit the action button to get the right angle for the jump. While in the air, the run buttons can be pressed to increase the height of the jump. The player must clear the bar at the height of their jump. The higher the jump, the better. In the video game, there is a qualifying round for each event. If the player is unable to reach the qualifying time or distance, the player will lose a life. The game can accommodate two players at once for the races, and up to four players can compete in the same events overall. Konami showcased track and field at the September 1983 Tokyo Amusement Machine Show. Despite the excitement for Laserdisc arcade games at the time, Track and Field was the most well-received game at the show. Konami released the game to Japanese arcades after the show. Konami licensed the American distribution rights to Centuri. Centuri showcased the game at the October 1983 Amusement and Music Operators Association show, where it was also a big hit. Konami would then release the game themselves in Europe in 1983 as well. In Japan and Europe, the game was known as Hyper Olympic. However, in America, since Atari had the rights to the Olympics name, the American release of the game became known as Track and Field. That is the brief backstory to Track and Field. With that now told, it's time to play the game for ourselves. 
And here we are in the game. This is Track and Field, as you can see, copyright 1983 by Konami. And we can see our character. This would be our guy. Uh, he's actually a lot better at this than I am. Uh, I'm gonna do what I can in this game, but this game is hard and it's a button masher, which has never been my strong suit. So uh, as you can see, I've been practicing a bit. I've gotten better, like each time I've gotten better, but uh, I will see what I can do as I move forward in this game. Don't expect a lot from me though. Let's put a quarter in and kind of hope for the best here. So uh, we will put in my official initials instead of just AAA to try to get my practice in. But yeah, I can only practice so much because button mashers, they they hurt after a while. On your mark. All right. And we wait, we wait. And we go. All right, so now you have to hit the buttons kind of alternately as fast as you can. I'm a little bit behind, but as long as I qualify, I'll be all right. It looks like I should qualify. That's one of my worst performances, but like I said, I'm trying to get the peak of what I can do here. Okay, and now for this one, I don't want to hit both buttons, I don't think. I just want to hit one button. And then when I'm at the end, action, there we go, 46. That's not bad. Is that enough? I need six and a half. Not quite. As you can see, one time I got 6.72. Right, let's try it again. Mash, 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 mash. Ugh, you don't want to go too high. That's the problem. Like, you have to time everything so well. And like I said, you're... That's not good enough. Not good enough. Mash, 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 mash. Go. It's better to be low than high, I think. Ooh, that's, ooh, that's close. Foul. foul. How dare you? And I have failed. Yeah, foul means I went over the line. That's what that means. All right, so not bad. I could do a lot better though. Let's try this again. I'm not gonna be able to make it through too many more events than what you've seen though. Um, I think last time I made it, yeah, I made it through the long jump once and that was it. One of the problems is like, mark? how do I, how do I get a button mashing setup without changing a ton on my computer? Ah, why, why was it so long though? I got a foul. I went too early. Get set. Get set. All right, button mash. Like I have a slightly different position, so hopefully I can do a little bit better here. Look at my centimeters per second go. 11.75, that's pretty good. This is a better position for me to, to button mash, I guess. All right, let's try here. That's way too high. That's not going to do it at all. And for the record, they will not stop you um, if you don't hit the button. Ah, that was a good. That was a good amount of speed. But as you can see, like that little bit of change in the angle is not going to do it. All right. Button mash again. Oh, that's too high, but maybe I can pull it off. That looks good to me. Looks like I qualified. New record for me. All right, I'm on the scoreboard. Hooray. <laughs> they didn't give that to me for the, the 100 meter dash. All right, now we're on to the javelin throw. Same thing as That wasn't a high enough angle. As you can see, I haven't cleared this one yet. I need to get 43, I believe, for this one. But, you know, uh, 45, we'll see. The way that the javelin works on this one's so weird. Ugh. 
I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this if just two degrees off is going to throw me off that much. All right, 39, is that going to be better for me? It doesn't look like it. Wait! Oh, 15 centimeters! 15 centimeters off! Oh. All right, I'm going to try it one more time. High score for me. Whatever. Um, this, like I said, this game's hard. It requires so much practice and so much ability to do a button mashing technique that I've never been able to master. Um, th there's lots of techniques. We'll talk about some of the ways that people were basically breaking this machine in, in a bit, but I'm trying to do it legitimately. Just a, a control setup, two buttons in front of me on my thumbs, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Is it the best method? No, but that's it's what people would normally go for. And that's what I'm going to try to do. All right, go, 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 go. Go, mustachioed man. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be somebody. I don't recognize anybody that would have looked like that in the Olympics, but what do I know? There we go, 11.84. I, I, I qualify, but I'm no Carl Lewis, but um, you know, I'm no Carl Lewis in the next one either. All right, button mash, get up as fast as you can. Oh, that was too early, so it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have mattered. Like, the angle is so important. Don't, don't pump your fist in, in admiration of that. Go, 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 go. That's not good enough. Not good enough. Is that a foul? I touched the line, but I'm not over it. It's fine, sweet. Whoa, way. Nice, new record. Okay. Let's try the, the javelin throw. Forty one. That's pretty good. Are you kidding me? What do I got to do for you guys? Come on. That's a foul. I don't, I don't care. Went over the line. Yeah, the way that the javelin kind of changes its angle after you throw it, it's wow. just so weird to me. So busy button mashing that I didn't have time. Yep, I'm not going to qualify. There's no way. They're not going to give that to me at all. Alright, so I did worse this time than I did last time. I think I'm going to give it one more shot. And if I can't pull this... Oh, well, I got a higher score somehow. If I can't pull it off this time, I think we're going to have to call it. But, uh, you know, I have tried. I, I don't think... Yeah, I, I didn't think that showing off all the different events was going to be something I could do for you guys. Uh, which is why I went into detail about all the different events in the, the intro to it. Knowing that, like, oh, this is not going to happen. This game's hard. And the fact that you can't practice any one event is is not a good sign. I don't think it's set up right, but I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more later. Am I not button mashing fast enough for you? There we go. As long as I can beat him, we should be good. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, 14 seconds. It, it's pretty easy to get 14 seconds. All right, it's the long jump though. It's this angle stuff. God, I got a good speed and then I just didn't time it right. I was like three meters off of where I needed to be. Not good. It's that timing, it's so difficult. All of the timing really. Uh, that should put me around six. Just short? Yeah, just short. Getting all the timing. 
requires just so much practice. Nope, held it too far. How did I do worse than last time? All right, yeah, that's that's it for me today. My my button mashing skills I don't think are are good. My my you know forearms are starting to hurt from this. So I think that is going to do it for me today. Too bad I wasn't able to get past the javelin throw. I got so close, so close. Uh, but that is the game played, and so with the game now played, let's talk about how it holds up today. Playing the game today, the game is fun. I do have to put a bit of an asterisk on that and say for short periods of time because my thumbs are pretty sore after what I was able to do. So I can't imagine people playing it for longer than 20 to 30 minutes before needing a break. This is not a game that you can sink a lot of time to, at least in a single session. But does it make me want to improve and be better at this game to make it to the other events? It absolutely does. Uh, but this game... It hurts after a while, and you need some sort of alternate method to um, button mash. And the way that people are going to go is either thumbs or fingers or, you know, basically their whole arms. Maybe it's easier on an arcade cabinet. It usually is on an arcade cabinet than it is at home with just, you know, a couple buttons on a controller the way that I was doing it. Uh, but overall, the game is fun. In terms of its technical quality, the the quality of the game is very high. The graphics are really good. They Everything looks like it's supposed to. They even have sound with voices describing what is going on in the game, and that's something that you don't see a lot in, in video games of the time. So the technical achievements of this game are very high, and I do have to point that out. The gameplay, I do have to say it doesn't necessarily age all that well. I don't think too many people are interested in what I've been calling button mashers anymore. And that's unfortunately going to be a term that I'm going to be using more and more often as we continue. Just hit the buttons as quickly as you can in order to win. Uh, I've never been that big of a fan of that kind of style of gameplay. So if you're also not a fan, uh, this is a game that you might want to check out. But just know you're, you're going to be button mashing to go through. And there's lots of methods that people use in order to um, do that better. Uh, we'll talk about some of the methods that people were using at the time, but uh, the most popular one is more of a rhythmic method where you just kind of slam the controller into your fingers instead of pushing your fingers into the controller. There's, there's lots of things that people are trying to do to make this hurt less, but the fact that you have to come up with all these outside methods kind of proves it's not necessarily the best control scheme, at least from my perspective. But you know, the, the concept of the game, the Summer Olympics, uh, we've described it a bit in case you weren't familiar with it, but they're huge deals. So I assume that most people in the audience are aware of the Summer Olympics and it's got a lot of prestige and honor to it. So for us to be able to compete in that and to actually have some sort of competition between uh, players is a huge deal, right? That the, the fact that you can just kind of bring the sport to life in an arcade game and make it fairly realistic, especially for 1983 standards, is a big deal. With that said, are there better Olympic games that come out afterwards? Yeah, of course. Uh, but this game is a huge deal because we haven't really talked about uh, Olympic games before. We, we've mentioned one other game in the past, and uh, we have talked about sports games briefly, but this one actually made the sport come to life. And that's something that is worth checking out. So if you are interested at all in sports games or competition games, uh, this is a game worth checking out. Uh, speaking of competition, I should mention the world record for this game. It is held at the time of recording at, by a Hector Rodriguez. He has 95,350 points in the six events. So I feel that I was fairly close to what he was able to do, but once again, I can't even make it to the end, so I really shouldn't talk too much. But I was able to get 20,000, so... You know, I'm not I'm not so far off as I am in 
so many other games that we have played. But once again, because you only have the six events, the, the world record and somebody trying it for the first time are going to be a lot closer because of how limited uh, time you have to score those points. But that is my modern take on the game, basically. It's worth checking out. The technical achievements, I think, are really good. The gameplay is fun for short bursts. So if you are interested in uh, sports or multiplayer games uh, that are classic, this is worth checking out. And that's my modern take on the game. When the game was released, the game proved to be successful. By the end of 1983, the game sold over 38,000 arcade cabinets in Japan. It proved to be a bestseller in America and Europe as well. In the US, it became the third highest grossing arcade game of 1984. In the United Kingdom, it was the highest grossing arcade game of 1984. The critics were also positive about the game. In particular, the graphics, sound, and gameplay were all praised. As time has gone on, the view on the game has remained positive. Track and field will occasionally make top video games of all time lists. However, the game ran into some issues. Because the two run buttons needed to be pressed so quickly, many players started using alternate tactics to press the buttons, including sweeping a coin or using a metal ruler. This caused quite a bit of damage to the buttons. Later versions of the cabinet would be modified to prevent such damage. In 1984, Konami and Centuri held an international competition for track and field that drew more than a million players. It became the largest organized video game competition of all time. It lasted over a month, with Phil Britt winning the World Championship in Tokyo on June 10th, 1984. The legacy of track and field would be quite extensive. While not the first game based on the Olympics, track and field would inspire further Olympic-based video games. Of course, the 1984 Summer Olympics would also help with that. Track and Field would also spawn a resurgence of sports arcade games. Expect to see more influential and important sports video games in the future. Track and Field would spawn ports, re-releases, and sequels. We will keep an eye on these as we continue. With another success on their hands, Konami would continue to be an influential force in the Japanese video game market. We will hear from Konami again in the future as we continue. That will do it for the story of track and field for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video when we eradicate some bugs.